Guys, in this video, we want to look at these stages of papedema, right? These four stages. However, let's take a recap of what we have seen so far. You can see here that um, it's a disease of optic nerve vascular disturbance. Basically, here there is passive disc swelling associated with raised intracranial pressure, usually bilateral and asymmetrical. So, what is happening here? Disc edema, disc swelling, passive because of what raised intracranial pressure. We have seen all this in the beginning. So, these people will come with occipital headache, nausea, projectile vomiting, diplopia, focal neurological deficit. You can see. They will have transient blackout of vision, which is called as amaros fugas. Okay, this is a neurological emergency and requires immediate hospitalization. So uh, we told you that this is a non-inflammatory disc of op uh, edema of optic disc, which is secondary to raised intracranial pressure. Uh, why can there be raised intracranial pressure? Because of congenital stenosis of the aqueduct or craniosynostosis. There could be intracranial uh, space occupying lesion, especially the posterior fossa ones, which will obstruct aqueduct of sylvius, re leading to raised intracranial pressure and papal edema, meningitis, encephalitis. Some infections are there, in, uh, right? And then there can be blood, intracranial hemorrhage. There can be obstruction of CSF flow. There can be tumor of spinal cord. There can be idiopathic intracranial hypertension, IIH, or pseudotumor cerebri. In young uh, obese women, again here, occipital headache, bilateral papal edema, idiopathic it is, nobody knows why. Then coming to systemic uh, conditions like systemic hypertension, that's malignant hypertension, pregnancy induced hypertension, PIH, cardiopulmonary insufficiency, blood dyscrasias, and nephritis. Then you saw that there can be blunt trauma of the head leading to diffuse cerebral edema, leading to papal edema. There could be cerebral venous sinus thrombosis. Okay. So, usually bilateral, it can be unequal and uh, on the other side, like uh, in Foster Kennedy syndrome, there can be frontal lobe tumor, olfactory, spinoidal, meningiomata. So, optic atrophy on the side of lesion, optic atrophy on the side of lesion and papal edema on the other side. Wow. And pseudo Foster Kennedy syndrome, there will be pre-existing optic atrophy on the other side. Okay. Unilateral papal edema and pre-existing optic atrophy on the other side. So then coming to some high race uh, theory, we saw that uh, because of this pressure disturbances, what will happen this uh, uh, across this lamina cribrosa, right in this pre-laminar region, there can be uh, and because of ocular hypotony, etc, etc, there will be axoplasmic stasis, especially this anterograde uh, flow will be affected, there will be stasis of axonal, axoplasm leading to axonal swelling, then leading to extracellular edema. Got it guys? That is the high risk theory. Then you saw that uh, after 1 to 5 days of intracranial pressure only all this will happen or if there is subarachnoid hemorrhage very fast this papal edema can happen. But if you remove this intracranial pressure recovery can be around 8 weeks if it is a uh, sudden uh, condition that you have cured. If it is chronic then visual prognosis will be bad. Clinical features basically uh, we want to look at um, uh, 4 stages early fully developed chronic atrophic that is what we want to look at now. Focus. Early incipient uh, papal edema, here uh, visual acuity is uh, fine, uh, symptoms also these people do not have, or uh, I think ophthalmic symptoms they do not have maybe. Then pupillary reactions are also normal, happy, happy. But when you see the fundus, ophthalmoscopic examination, when you do, you will see that there is obscuration of disc margin. It is this one guys, it is this photo. You can see here, obscuration of disc margin, nasal margins are more involved. Okay, So, in this case, if this is left eye. This will be nasal margin, right? Nasal margin, more obscuration will be there, right? Blurring of pep peripapillary nerve fiber layer, peripapillary nerve fiber layer blurring, absence of spontaneous venous pulsation at the disc. So, at this uh, disc, no, this vein should pulsate, this vein, right? It should pulsate, but there will be absence of this pulsation, very important. Where does this absence happen? Papilledema. Remember, in normal people, the vein will pulsate in the disc, okay? Look at this. Can you see here the vein pulsating? Here, guys. Okay, so then there will be mild hyperemia of the disc. Mild hyperemia of the disc. Can you see any hyperemia of the disc? Mild, yeah. Splinter hemorrhages in the peripapillary region. Splinter hemorrhage, if you want, you can search. Visual fields are fairly normal. So these people are asymptomatic, right? Visual fields are normal. What and all you will see? Obscuration of the disc margin, nasal margins are involved more, absence of uh, uh, spontaneous venous pulsation, very important, you have to write this in the exam, blurring of peripapillary nerve fiber layer, mild hyperemia of the disc, splinter hemorrhage, okay, mild hyperemia, splinter hemorrhage also you can see, 
these are all very typical optic nerve symptoms right move on establish or fully develop papal edema here what will happen here uh, they will have transient visual obscur obscuration amaurosis fugas right transient visual obscurations in one or both eye and this only for a few seconds after standing after standing after standing few seconds only they will have transient visual obscuration in one or both eye especially after standing visual acuity here is normal these people are still able to see fine pupillary reaction also is normal okay then ophthalmoscopic features guys uh, uh, optic disc edema okay physiological cup obliterated cup is what obliterated cup obliterated disc becomes hyperemic markedly hyperemic now okay markedly hyperemic blurring of margin obviously this will write everywhere blurring of margin all around remember there they said nasal then some other things but here all around all around there is blurring of margin okay then cotton wool spot superficial hemorrhages veins will become tortuous engorged okay veins will become tortuous and engorged that you write okay disc appears to be enlarged mushroom or dome shaped so this uh, we saw somewhere right mushroom or dome shaped so that same thing that the corkscrew thing right see this is the fully developed one established or fully developed one here you can see marked hyperemia right yeah we are able to see that then you will see that the cup is obliterated margins are blurred on all sides then what else did they say disc edema will be there okay veins are uh, tortuous and uh, engorged but one specific they are, thing they are telling here the disc is like some mushroom dome or something it seems see the disc appears to be enlarged and elevated it looks elevated elevated mushroom or dome shaped this word no they are using even in the next stage okay this dome shaped and all just remember elevated kind of elevated it looks then you will have cotton wool spots superficial hemorrhage same hemorrhage you know they are telling here also patterns lines very important patterns lines you will see circumferential grayish white folds uh, may develop due to the separation of nerve fibers by the edema so this patterns line is very important where will you see in established papal edema patterns lines see this pattern line can you see that it's very nice actually very nicely you can see and what color is it grayish white and it is circumferential 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 see it circumferential grayish white folds patterns lines yeah in papal edema you will see it okay then hard exudates also you will see here they spoke about cotton wool spots okay here they saying hard exudates may be there macular star or macular fan okay so this is what is saying star fan etc simply to remind you visual fields show enlargement of blind spot see now visual field also started getting affected visual acuity is normal but visual fields is affected you understood right so visual field is what those circle circle the area that you could see that is affected okay then coming to chronic long standing vintage papal edema long standing see this is drusen's something some crystal deposit let's see this okay this will mean chronic so basically visual acuity is variably reduced acuity is started getting affected now okay pupillary reactions are still normal still pupillary reactions are normal okay till now pupillary reaction not affected at all so ophthalmoscopic features what will you see it is this photo guys it is this one see this this photo here okay chronic one okay very good you remember they already told that in chronic one visual uh, pro profile axis will be bad right okay then uh, what will you see here hemorrhage and cotton wool spots resolve peripapillary edema is resolved everything we can find out but the optic disc gives appearance of dome shape or cam champagne cork dome shape is still there but it is giving what appearance of champagne cork are you seeing any champagne cork appearance here i don't see any champagne cork appearance okay then what are they saying here the central cup remains obliterated small drusen like crystal deposits corpora amelisia you will see where will you see corpora amelisia 
in this chronic cc chronic c everything is c here chronic champagne cor corpora amylacea okay begin blind spot is enlarged they are seeing so it's kind of weird right what do you see okay then we will go to the atrophic one atrophic what is happening guys here severely impaired visual acuity pupillary reaction also started getting affected life diff reflex is impaired in ophthalmoscopic features you will see grayish white discoloration and pallor of disc due to atrophy uh, gliosis prominence of disc will be there okay this one guys see how the disc is paler of disc you will see then what are they saying here please go to that uh, fourth one atrophic one so you will see that there is grayish white discoloration of the pallor yeah grayish white discoloration and pallor of disc prominence of the disc prominence of the disc will decrease see obviously very clearly you can see the disc is not at all prominent is it prominent for whom is it prominent not at all prominent right okay retinal arterioles are narrowed and veins become less congested so it's atrophic right whitish sheath develops around the vessels can you see any whitish sheath around these vessels visual field again what will happen there is concentric contraction or uh, peripheral okay so that is what we are seeing here in atrophic same thing you write okay concentric contraction of peripheral field okay then prominence of disc will decrease this we saw some white sheath develops around the vessels i think this is an important point what do you say guys focus what are we looking at atrophic papilloedema remember here what will happen even finally this pupillary reaction is affected affected okay then differential diagnosis we have to look at of papilloedema how will you differentiate from pseudo papilloedema and papillitis what is what is first of all pseudo papilloedema it is a, a term dis, used to describe elevation of the disc elevation of the disc okay so this will happen in conditions like optic disc drusen hypermetropia and persistent hyaloid tissue what the hell is this so if this is a persistent hyaloid tissue you can imagine it is elevated but is it really elevated or yeah elevation of disc let us look at our friend here papillo edema bilateral transient attack of blurred vision um, what is it amaurosis fugace something later dec vision decreases due to optic atrophy okay pain is not there wow pain is not there in papilledema guys did you focus how is the fundus examination media is clear that means all your uh, vitreous aqueous and all is clear lens is clear looks like then disc color how is disc red juicy that uh, some uh, marked a hyperemia they told right disc margins obviously blurred disc swelling will be there okay peripapillary edema is present venous engorgement retinal hemorrhage retinal exudates marked marked more marked everything is more 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 here macula macular star may be present feels enlarged blind spot fluorescein angiography vertical oval pool of dye due to leakage main thing you remember here there will be absence of the venous pulsations right guys that they didn't write here papillitis papillitis is that optic neuritis uh, when only optic disc is affected right unilateral condition there will be a sudden onset loss of vision there can be a uh, pain pain can be there with ocular movement vitreous haze you can see in optic neuritis marked hyperemia is there in this also okay disc swelling is there but not that much disc margins are blurred peripapillary edema is there in this also venous engorgement is less marked you everything else is less 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 macular star is there in this one and macular fan is there in optic neuritis that is papillitis fields here how it will happen it is some kind of a concentric contraction peripherally enlargement of blind spot here they are saying central scotoma so center he cannot see optic neuritis guy cannot see in the center this is guy is kind of heading towards a tubular vision kind of a thing but this guy has central scotoma okay central scotoma he has the optic neuritis guys Why, guys how is it going is it too much for you to understand okay when you do fluorescein angiography here there is leakage of dye here there is minimal leakage and here there is no leakage at all which is just no leakage guy no leakage guy pseudo papillitis that is that elevation of that uh, disc or something right so unilateral bilateral etc etc 
let us not look into this much okay actually it is not that difficult we'll see off weight see here fluorescein angiography no leakage of dye fields no defect in the field macula star fan absent retinal exudent absent retinal hemorrhage absent uh, reti in venous engorgement absent peri papillary edema absent media is also clear pain is not there no pain no tenderness disc margin is affected looks like other things the disc as such the color margin swelling and all are affected then defective vision can be there okay so there's no pain remember in uh, papillary edema no pain in pap pseudo papillitis no pain but in papillitis there is pain okay in papillitis there is pain see they are talking about the eye pain i am thinking right otherwise pain you already have right the occipital lobe pain headache see guys pseudo papillary edema and pseudo papillitis are same they are telling okay so here is the differences so you can look at the differences and learn okay star is there here fan is there here enlarged blind spot central uh, concentric contraction of peripheral field central scotoma here in papillitis etc we have just marked in some colors if you want you can see then moving on to treatment and prognosis what will you do it you will it is an emergency neurological you will treat the cause treat the cause treat the cause refer it basically you'll have to refer it to somebody who knows more about the brain right okay so that's it guys in this video we have looked at papilloedema basically it is a disease of the optic nerve diseases of optic nerve in that vascular disturbances we have papilloedema so what is it it is passive disc swelling associated with in, uh, raised intracranial pressure this is usually a bilateral condition though it may be asymmetric okay so uh, here uh, people will present with occipital headache nausea projectile vomiting diplopia they can have focal neurological deficit they can give history of transient blackout of vision amaurosis fugas papilloedema is a neurological emergency it needs immediate hospitalization you saw the causes of this raised intracranial pressure congenital aqueductal stenosis craniosynostosis intras uh, cranial space occupying lesion brain tumors especially posterior fossa ones which obstruct aqueous duct aqueduct of sylvius intracranial infections like meningitis encephalitis you can name some organisms also here if you want intracranial hemorrhage uh, obstruction of csf tumors of spinal cord idiopathic intracranial hypertension young obese women uh, pseudo tumor cerebri systemic conditions like malignant hypertension pregnancy induced hypertension cardiopulmonary insufficiency blood dyscrasia nephritis blunt trauma to head causing diffuse cerebral edema cerebral venous sinus thrombosis bilateral is more than unilateral there can be unequal change explained by for, uh, some foster kennedy syndrome can be there optic atrophy on the side of lesion papilledema on the other side pseudo foster kennedy syndrome where there is um, unilateral papilledema associated with raised intracranial pressure pre existing optic atrophy due to some other cause okay then coming to pathogenesis high race theory stasis of axoplasma especially the anterograde flow all this happens because of the disturbance in the pressure gradient in the uh, across the lamina cribrosa in the pre lamina region there is axoplasmic stasis leading to axonal swelling uh, ultimately extracellular edema extra ocular hypotony also alters it alters what the pressure evolution and recovery usually in 1 to 5 days of raised intracranial pressure this papilledema can develop if there is subarachnoid hemorrhage acute then it develops even more rapidly but if you uh, normalize the intracranial pressure the recovery is slow up to 8 weeks uh, but if it is a chronic condition visual prognosis is poor remember that there are four stages guys um, early fully developed chronic atrophic early what did you see usually their uh, visual acuity is normal symptoms are absent pupillary reactions are normal visual fields are normal right visual acuity visual fields everything are normal but you will have some findings the findings can be that there is obscuration of the disc margin especially nasal side then absence of the spontaneous venous pulsation blurring of peripapillary nerve fiber layer mild hyperemia of the disc splinter hemorrhages okay then coming to the established fully developed papilledema you will see that the patient gives history of transient obs visual obscuration 
for a few seconds that is especially when he stands up then you what will you see you will see that disc edema there is um, the cup is obliterated marked hyperemia blurring of the margin cotton wool spots superficial hemorrhage vein is are tortuous engorged remember this is a special sign that you will see in papal edema when you compare it with papillitis and pseudopapillitis patons line paton paton patons lines guys patons lines circumferential grayish white folds separation of nerve fibers by the edema hard exudates you can see macular star or macular fan actually they said star right see this is uh, macular star guys can you see it looks like a star uh -huh. what is this macular star macular star macular star yeah they will see it in papal edema papal edema Edema. Yeah, can you say paton line? Paton line. Papal edema. Papal edema. Very good. And then this is the chronic, uh, long-standing vintage papal edema. Here you will see again the scorpora amelasia, that is small drusen-like crystalline deposits. And then you will see uh, optic disc, uh, the dome. It gives dome appearance, champagne cork. Okay. Pupillary reactions are normal here, but everything else is affected. Visual acuity is affected. Visual field or blind spot is enlarged. Then you come lastly to this uh, atrophic papal edema where you see that even pupillary reaction is affected light. Reflex is impaired, Im uh, severely impaired visual acuity. You will see a whitish sheathing develops around the vessels. They didn't explain why, isn't it? Because of all the edema or what? Prominence of the disc will decrease concentric contraction of the peripheral fields. Differential diagnosis differentiated from what and all? Papillitis and pseudopapillitis. That is pseudopapilloedema. Okay. You have to differentiate from these two. <clears throat> and the differences we have seen, <clears throat> usually in papal edema, there is no pain. Papillitis, there will be pain. Vitreous haze is there in papillitis. Then everything is kind of marked in papal edema, peripapillary edema, venous engorgement, retinal hemorrhage, retinal exudates, everything is more, more, more. You will see macular star, enlarged blind spot, right? Then you will see um, fluorescein angiography, it will de uh, leak, the dye will leak, obviously. Uh, what is happening edema right so all the dye is leaking isn't it okay just look at the other two then we are moving on treatment and prognosis guys you will do ct scan mri you will treat the cause mainly okay that's it about uh, papillo edema bye 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 bye